Welcome to the Snapped Spine channel. If you are interested in military technology then the Pantasir S1 needs no introduction. We are all somehow familiar with this widely disputed air defense system. On paper, and in Russian presentations, it looks great. Equipped with combined dual 30mm autocannon and multiple SAM tubes it looks and smells invincible, at least on paper, but let's take a closer look. Using 57E6 missiles, the Pantsir S1 can engage tactical aircraft at a maximum range of 20 and altitude of 10 km, subsonic cruise missiles at a range of 12 and altitude of 6 km, and high-speed air-to-ground missiles at a range of 7 and altitude of 6 km. The 57E6 also possesses a minimum engagement range of 1.5 km. Using its guns, the Pantsir S1 can engage airborne targets at 4 km at a maximum altitude of 3 km. Each gun can fire up to 40 rounds per second and possess a secondary capability to attack ground targets. So where is the trick? What is missing in all of that? What causes Pantsir S1 to underperform? To be fair, the S-1 operated by Russian crews produced some promising results when deployed to guard Russia-operated Kmimin Air Base in Syria. More than 100 drones of different types were destroyed and none of the systems was lost. Russian military claims that a significant number of guided bombs and large-caliber artillery rounds were denied their targets in mid-air with the use of Pantsir S-1. Most of that is true and has been documented. Take into account that the Russian airbase has not been challenged by any organized airstrike due to fears that an attack of such would spark an open conflict with a nuclear superpower that Russia certainly is. No one in his right mind would risk that. The exact same behavior was practiced by the Russian military, they were ordered to avoid targeting coalition jets. For the very same reasons of course. Now let us put aside the Russian-operated S-1s and evaluate the system's performance in the skilled hands of foreign operators. During the high season in Syria, two Pantsirs were lost due to airstrikes, one of the systems was clearly caught offline, you may analyze that event in one of my videos, link in the description below. And the second one was clearly lost due to stupidity and the lack of critical thinking. One Syrian Pantsir ADS was reportedly destroyed by We Know Whom Jet in January 2020, after its operator left behind a mobile phone which enabled the system to be successfully tracked. Russian armed specialists reported that they can't find any technicians that would operate S1 to its full potential, and training new ones is a time-consuming and painful process. Leaving an offline air defense system in a conflict zone or using trackable devices in it is clear proof of that claim. The second chapter of this report has been written by the LNA, which stands for the Libyan National Army. The term disaster is an understatement in this case. Nearly 10 Pantsirs operated by the Libyan National Army led by renegade commander Khalifa Haftar, have been destroyed during May-June 2020 clashes. Unchecked rumor says that a dozen more were lost during the Libyan conflict but I will not give a lot of credit to that, there is not much evidence available to prove that claim. Most of the destroyed Pantsirs were disabled while in offline mode or during transportation. Some of the systems, operated by the reasonably skilled crews, recorded some worth mentioning numbers of Turkish drones being shot down from the sky, the unofficial number is 100 plus and the official number indicates at least 70. There is a possibility that some of the systems may have been operated by Russian or UAE mercenaries. A large number of Pantsirs operating in Libya is the UAE export variant, mounted on a German-built MAN SX-45 eight-wheeled truck. These were sold only to the United Arab Emirates and thus, easy to identify. One of those systems has been captured by the government troops following a streak of odd events. In May 2020, a drone targeted one of the S-1s shortly after it arrived at al -Watiyor. The system was driven into the aircraft bunker which was then struck by a missile. The airbase was controlled by the Libyan National Army. The attack, believed to have been carried out by a Turkish-made TB2 drone, likely neutralized the system before it could be put into operation. It was damaged but not destroyed. It is likely that the missile hit a support armored vehicle next to the Pantsir. The fact that missile missed the Pantsir and hit the adjacent vehicle, which shielded S1 from the blast, as it turned out, 
was a blessing in disguise for the government forces because just two days later, they captured it. Based on numerous images on social media, it appears smoked but largely untouched. It has been paraded as a war trophy for some time to disappear without a trace a few days after, we all know what that means, this tech has been compromised. In the defense of the S-1, it has been designed as a part of a larger, more complete defense system including SAMs like S-300, S-400 or TOR, also electronic warfare systems like Krasuka. The Pantsia S-1 is acting in close coordination with them as well as with radars which provide a long-range information field from low to high altitudes thereby improving target designation and use of armaments. Isolated, the Pantsia S-1 is stripped of the large chunk of the battle awareness provided by its larger counterparts operating within the same system. It's like an MBT left without the infantry support, blind and vulnerable no doubt. A system like S-1 requires a highly trained crew to operate, buying a weapon is easy but operating its complex systems is a whole nother story. No wonder Russian operated Pantsiers display reasonable performance whilst foreign operated won't do the cut. The Russian military operates ZSU-23 and Tunguska for decades now, switching to Pantsier wasn't a daunting task for already highly experienced crews. On the other hand, both Libyan and Syrian operators had no time to familiarize themselves with its capabilities and weaknesses, thus the outcome. That's it for today. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, I really appreciate it. Links to valuable videos, largely connected to the subject, are available in the comments section below. Take care and see you next time.